In section 4.6, we'll be focusing on slope. You've seen slope in your algebra classes in the past. However, we are going to relate slope to geometry today. So let's start by talking about the slope formula first. If you're given two points, x1, y1, x2, y2, which is a fancy way of saying your first x-coordinate, your first y-coordinate, your second x-coordinate, and your second y-coordinate, we could find the slope, which we represent by the letter m, by subtracting our y's and dividing that by subtracting our x's. Now, we have to make sure we follow the same path. So if we are going to start at the point on the right and do y2 minus y1, we have to then do x2 minus x1 in our denominator. Or if you decide to start with the point on the left, we have to subtract our y's and do y1 minus y2, but then we divide that by x1 minus x2. So make sure we're following the same path. Or if you see these triangles, that's just a fancy way of saying change in y over change in x, which is what we just did. We subtracted our y's and we divided that by subtracting our x's. So if I asked you to find the slope of the line containing these two points, I'm going to go ahead and just label them x1, y1, x2, y2, and then use our first slope formula that we talked about. So I'm going to do y2 minus y1, which is 8 minus 6. And we're dividing that by, now I have to jump back to the point on the right and start there, our x2 minus our x1, so negative 2 minus 4, which results in negative 1 third. Make sure that you reduce your fraction. Now let's just talk about the difference between positive slope, negative slope, zero slope, and undefined. Now reading from left to right, positive slope is going to be a line that increases. So if we were to choose two points on that line, we are going to rise up, which means it's positive, and go to the right, which means it's positive, which means we have a positive slope. Positive divided by a positive is a positive. For a negative slope, the line is going to be decreasing from left to right. So if we chose two points there and we did rise over run, now rising up would be positive, but since we're going to the left, that would be negative. So if we're doing a positive divided by a negative, that's a negative slope. For zero slope, let's take a look at that. If we chose two points on this line, would we have to rise up at all to get from one point to the next? No, since they're on the same level, we'll just run. So when we do rise over run, it'll be zero over some number, which means that we have a slope of zero. And this kind of line is a horizontal line. Horizontal line always has a slope of zero. Now let's take, let's take a look at undefined. So if we were to draw this in here, if we have two points on that line, to get from one point to the next and do rise over run, we will rise up to get from one point to the next. So we'll rise up some number, but will, will we run over any? No. So we're doing a number over zero, and any time we divide a number by zero, that's undefined. So we can call this slope undefined, or sometimes we'll see no slope, and that's a vertical line. Let's talk about the difference between parallel and perpendicular lines. Parallel lines always have the same slope, so those two lines will never intersect. While perpendicular lines are lines that have slopes that are opposite reciprocals. So they form a right angle, slopes are opposite reciprocals. For example, if the slope of one line is 3, the slope of the line that's perpendicular to it would have to be negative one-third. We take the opposite sign and the reciprocal of the fraction, so we flip the fraction. Now these examples are extremely important. So starting off with A, we're finding the slope of HJ. We did one very similar to that in the beginning. So we just do change in Y over change in X. But now let's take a look at part B, which gets a little bit more complicated. We're asked to find the slope of the altitude from H to IJ. Well, let's draw in that altitude. We know that an altitude is going to form right angles with the side to which it is drawn, based off of what we talked about before. So the altitude here would have to form right angles with this side. So it's perpendicular to IJ. We can find the slope of IJ since we're given the coordinates of the endpoints there. So if we could find the slope of IJ and then we could take the opposite reciprocal because the red line, that segment is that's being drawn to IJ, is perpendicular to it. So if we could find the slope of IJ, we could just take the opposite reciprocal, which would be the slope of our altitude. So the slope of IJ is 1 sixth, 
We found that by doing change in y over change in x, we subtracted our y's over subtracting our x's. And then, if we want to find the slope of our altitude, since it's perpendicular to that line, we take the opposite reciprocal. So the opposite reciprocal of positive 1 6 is negative 6. Negative 6 over 1, but you can just say negative 6. Now let's take a look at part C. Now we want to find the slope of the median to ij. So now, the difference between the median and altitude, oh yeah, median is going to hit at the midpoint of the side to which it is drawn. It's going to divide the side to which it is drawn into two congruent segments. So when we think median, we should be thinking midpoint. So now we have to think back and use our midpoint formula. So we want to find the midpoint of IJs, since that's where our median is going to intersect with that segment. Remember, we find the midpoint by adding our x's and dividing by 2, our x-coordinates and dividing by 2, and then adding our y-coordinates and dividing by 2. So for point i and j, we're finding the midpoint of that segment, which would then get us the point of intersection of our median with that segment. So it'll give us our midpoint. So when we go ahead and simplify that, we end up getting 5, 3. So that midpoint right there is 5, 3. And now we want to find the slope of the median, which is that blue segment. So we have two points now. We had point H, which was given to us, which is 4, 7, and we just found our midpoint 5, 3. So now that we have those two points, we could find the slope using our slope formula, which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So we're finding the slope between those two points, just like we talked about in the beginning. So I subtracted 7 from 3 and then 4 from 5, which leaves us with negative 4 over 1, or just negative 4.